I don't have much time. I have about 20 minutes, so I'm about to do like a super rapid fire review of the iPhone SE here. So this is just going to be my overall thoughts with the device after spending some time with it. Now, at first, I wasn't too impressed when this first came out just because, oh, I should probably zoom in for you guys so you guys can see what this device is like, right? Starlight. Now, like I, I was saying before, I wasn't too impressed when this was first announced because I feel like it was just my tech enthusiast side speaking because it's like, wow, here we are again, Apple doing the bare minimum, which I'll touch on at the end of the video. But after using it for a while, it's sort of like a love-hate relationship, which seems like most Apple products these days. I'll get into my biggest complaint first. Um, the iPhone SE needs a plus size version or a max size version because I think it would help out this phone a lot. Let's talk about what I love first. The form factor. Small, versatile, Touch ID works nine out of 10 times. The one out of 10 times, it's like when you have gloves on or your fingers are wet. But other than that, works nine out of 10 times. And it just makes using a phone feel like a regular phone. You see, nowadays, phones are much more capable because of the hardware inside. When you go from a flagship phone like this and you go to a phone like this, here, let me get all my notifications out the way, right? Uh, this is so awkward. Oh my God, my appointment's popping up. When you go from a flagship to something like this, this makes you want to use your phone less. Not because there's less performance, because it's the same processor and it's just as fast as my iPhone 13 Pro here, but it's mainly the display. I'm just less immersed on the phone, and as a result of that, I'm on my phone less. Everything just feels so cramped, and that's with the smallest font possible. And I know a lot of people don't do that. I'm an exception. And that's why I think having a max or a plus model phone would really help the sales of this. The most I do on this, or the most I did on this device was use Safari. But if you guys have the SE, do you share the same experience? And I'd say, I would say another thing that really impressed me the most is similar to the Pixel lineup is the single lens does so much because of the newer processor, or I should say the older Pixel models. Now, it's not flagship quality, but for the price, the photos and videos are up there. Now, the opposing crowd will say, well, there are other phones that have two, three, four, five cameras. More cameras aren't necessarily better. In fact, even though I have three lenses on my iPhone 13 Pro, I would say 95% of my photos are with just the regular lens, which I think a vast majority of people use. Most people just take out their phone, snap the photo, that's it. And I think that's what the iPhone SE does pretty well. That came out really weird. But here's what I don't like. <laughs> the dislikes. Where's that dislike button? <laughs> just kidding. The battery life. So I mentioned before, this phone inherently makes you want to do less with it because in this day and age, it just feels archaic because of the display. It makes you want to do less, but it has a very capable processor though. But, there's a lot of buts here. If you do any sort of intensive task, your battery will just fade away. And here's the problem I have with the iPhone SE. Apple is putting a flagship processor in a value phone, but it feels like the chip is designed for the flagship with this much larger battery. It's like designing a high-end laptop CPU with better thermal designs for what it was intended for, and then throwing that same high-end CPU into a thin and light laptop. Sure, you're gonna get great performance, but how long is that gonna last? How long till it takes a toll on your battery? And what have we all learned from MKBHD's video on what affects battery longevity and performance? Heat. And I feel as though people in this price category don't need that much power. So just make an SE processor for the SE phone so the battery life and performance are better. Because to be completely honest, the performance gains at this price point are negligible. I don't know how to pronounce the word, but I'll have it somewhere on the screen. Just keep the great features like Deep Fusion and stuff like that and create the A15 SE. And I get it, Apple, you have bragging rights that you have 
the world's fastest processor in the cheapest phone. But you're leaps and bounds better than the competition, so just give us a little bit less. I would say one of the few things about having a full processor like this is that the longevity of this phone will be better than pretty much anything in its price category. But just shipping off a little performance isn't going to give the competition, competition that much of a lead. Um, the other thing that I don't like about this phone is the base space. 64 gigabytes is just not enough, especially with what you're putting on this phone, or what I should say what this phone is providing. With more people being on their phone and taking photos and videos to capture moments, especially now that this can shoot 4K 60, 64 gigabytes is just not going to cut it, and it's one of the main reasons why my mom won't buy this phone. At first she wanted it until she found out that it comes with just 64 gigabytes. Now, there's gonna be people saying, you know, just buy more storage through iCloud, but local storage should come first and it should always be a priority. So let's get my final thoughts about the iPhone SE here. Now, I said before that Apple is doing the bare minimum. I mean, it feels like they're doing the bare minimum. Like an innovation company, or I should say innovation driven company producing something like this. Let me show you guys the screen one more time. God, there's so many stuff on here. Like this in 2022. I mean, $300 more and you get the iPhone mini. But this phone is functional first and it's not really aimed for people who are tech enthusiasts like me. And to be completely honest, people who own the iPhone SE probably don't even watch tech videos. If you do, it's not a diss, I'm just saying, for the other people, the majority of SE users. They're just value-focused people. Good processor, good camera, good price, and you still get the iPhone experience. I'll take it. So I would say as soon as you hit that $500 price point for a phone, you check a lot of people out. And the iPhone SE, since its original release, just does the job. And its job is to deliver you the iPhone experience in a basic form factor we all grew up on at an affordable price. And that's why the iPhone SE exists. All right, guys, that's my review of the iPhone SE 2022 version. I appreciate every single sub, like, and comment. And as always, guys, for those that get anxiety whenever I throw my devices around, hey, happy.